Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we have another installment of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM. A bit of a slower week, I would say, for releases. We've got 25 songs I wanted to talk about, so uh, let's hop into it. As always, there's a Spotify link down below for all the songs in one simple playlist. If you use Spotify, if you use Apple Music, I'm sorry or YouTube music or anything else. But let's hop into it, into the bad category, songs that I thought were bad. Remember, these are just my opinions. Don't take them as gospel truth. Um, we've got Cod Dubs and Decimate featuring XAE with Facelift. Um, I appreciate the longer drops on a kind of Britom track like this, but there are just not much substance for me to really hold on to here. The lyrics are super aggressive, but with no real punch to them. And the drops are kind of just your standard empty Britom synths. So I'm not a fan. We've got Arm & Hammer featuring Chessie and Micah Martin from on Broken Hearted uh, from the new The Mess We Made EP. Um, a bit of a strange Arm & Hammer cut as they kind of dive into this deeper, more classic heavy dubstep sound that we haven't really heard from them as of late. It's been a lot more melodic. And um, yeah, I, again, Micah Martin's vocals, you need to be really careful when playing around with them. Uh, and I just don't think they packed the punch that they wanted it to, especially with the kind of boring heavy dubstep production. So uh, not a fan of that one. Then we got Benny Benassi, Dog Dubs, and Marie with La Musica. Uh, I don't really know what's happening to Benny Benassi as of lately, but this is kind of just as boring as all hell. It's got like a bit of a Latin kick to it, um, but there's nothing really else going on here whatsoever. It's a short track too, and I just didn't care for it at all. Then we got Ramesses B with Guardian, another D&B kind of funk fusion of a track, uh, but this is where I think the quantity of Ramesses B releases um, are really starting to show, and uh, the fact that the mixing is a little bit flat here, I thought the vocals were a bit dry, and the song just wasn't all that interesting. Uh, Ramesses B has kind of been on this, like, quantity over, yeah, just in lots of quantity as of late. I wouldn't say quantity over quality, because I think a lot of the stuff's been pretty good, but just a ton of releases, like, almost every two weeks, one or two weeks at this point, and um, it's kind of showing a little bit more with this track, right? I just don't think this is up to the standard that um, he normally produces. So then we got Kashmir with Satisfaction, uh, by the books, kind of big room main stage uh, track here that sounds like a majority of songs you'd hear from like an Ultra or EDC festival. Um, yeah, the final drop doesn't help the track either with how repetitive it sounds and kind of how boring. And I guess I expected a lot more from a final movement. It just kind of was the same thing over and over again. So I'm not a big fan. Then we're moving into the meh category of songs that I thought were pretty meh. Uh, we've got Axel Boy with Diamond in the Rough from the new Power Lines EP. Uh, this track in particular is kind of your generic drum and bass. Um, and uh, honestly, I thought it was like the least exciting and weakest track from the project. The pretty short, uh, I think, four track EP here. Um, but not too bad. I just think it's, it's fairly generic. Uh, there's a lot of that kind of style. Uh, this week you'll find here, but uh, then we got Cyclops with the Tear Jerker VIP from the new Tear Jerker remixes. Um, honestly, I did not hear much of a difference between this and the original whatsoever. I just I I almost no difference in maybe the mixing and mastering a little bit more, a heavier kick on the original, um, and maybe just high, slightly higher tempo. I think on this VIP, I don't get it. I don't know why it's a VIP. Uh, then we got Galantis featuring Rosalyn with One Cry from the new RXLP. Uh, Galantis has been trying to recapture some of the kind of gold that they had from their debut album, but uh, in doing so have sort of refused to evolve and in fact kind of fall deep into the kind of basic tropes of commercial house that is nowadays. And um, yeah, all that being said, I do think this is actually one of the better tracks in the LP that does actually a good job of sounding like an old pharmacy cut, um, but the rest of the album just uh, kind of isn't really worth it to me. I also am just making the connection right now that this is a callback to the original album because it's called the original is called pharmacy and this is rx is in like the like uh, like a pharmacy i just made that connection right now so uh but then we're moving into cyclops the tearjerker dea remix is one of the remixes that i want to talk about that wasn't the vip here obviously from the the remixes collection here but yeah, this is a slightly more of a melodic take on the original but again nothing really overly different from the original on this one kind of a weird one two remixes the vip and this day one but um it's a bit more of a lighter atmosphere and a little bit longer but it doesn't really elevate the track to something much more than what it originally was so we got Nerco and Cameron with Dark Room. A uh, real switch up in style and sound is this track is a more mellowed out, acoustically driven electro pop track. Um, it's got some kind of subdued vocals and a simple Latin beat to it. But um, with all that being said, I didn't really see myself returning to this a whole ton. I kind of just thought it was a basic song um, that sounded good, meh. Okay, that's kind of the best way to put it. But um, yeah, as we're moving into So Sus, Saturn, and Hex Cougar with Tried It All, this is a bit of an odd trap song, uh, audience wise, because it's too chill to really uh, to be like a big streaming hit, um, but not different enough to really hit those EDM fans like myself and probably watching those niche EDM fans. Um, until this like last minute weird 
180 turn the track does. It kind of becomes a whole new like track with like these distorted vocals and kicks and synths. And it's just like this kind of eerie vibe to it. It's a bit of an oddball track. I wasn't overly fond of it. But that being said, oh, I didn't think it was too bad. <laughs> uh, as we're moving into the good category now, uh, as we've got John Summit and Sub Focus featuring Julia Church with Go Back. Um, not the most kind of out there DNB. I do think it's well mixed and I love the vocals from Julia Church. Um, and I think that's those two things are really makes this song go from meh to good. But overall, it's simple and I think it works. Then we got Odessa featuring Betty Levette with The Last Goodbye, the Coven remix from the new Spin Back Remixes uh, collection of, I believe, eight or nine uh, remix songs from uh, the last couple kind of era of Odessa, not just quite their last album. But um, yeah, as expected from Coven, this is a DNB remix um, with the first half having a bit of a, like a, a stutter step to it and the second drop having a more straightforward high tempo liquid dnb style um all that being said i kind of expected this remix to be a little bit more grand a little bit more uh, explosive but it kind of stayed uh, reserved for the most part which i was okay on but i overall thought the track was good then we got Bishu with Diva from the new Micro Celebrity LP that's out now on Monster Cap. And this track in particular is one of my favorite cuts from the record. Um, it is short, as are most of the tracks in this LP, but the kind of lighthearted energy and carefree vibe uh, makes it a really fun listen time and time again. And that, I think, is a lot of the record. A lot of the Micro Celebrity is kind of this fun, carefree um, vibe to it. But I think this uh, is one that I find myself coming back to more so than some of the other ones. So... We got Shingo Nakamura and Nina Carr with Underneath, uh, another well-polished and mixed um, melodic house cut from Shingo, and with Nina's vocals here, absolutely killing it. I think this is one of the best vocal performances on a Shingo track I think I've heard in a while, um, so I uh, really, really like this one. We got Boom Kitty and Scythe with Diode War out now on Chompo. And uh, yeah, this is another kind of 8 bit centric electro house that we normally get from Chompo. Uh, but this one leans way more heavily into that kind of 8 bit sound design, video game sound design that we hear um, more so on uh, on the Chompo tracks. But uh, yeah, this one feels like a bit of a throwback to like 2015's electro in that kind of video game sound when that was really, really popular, like Nitro Fun kind of stuff. And um, yeah, I, I enjoy this one quite a bit. Then we got Flux Pavilion, Wooly, and Cami Robinson on repeat. Um, yeah, this is an old school dubstep track that's quite a bit of a bop. I will say the kind of um, nostalgic Flux is starting to get a tad stale for me, but hey, I'm enjoying this still a lot. I think Cami's vocals are great, and I'm happy this didn't turn into a kind of basic bro step track, uh, as I was afraid it would have with uh, seeing Wooly on there. But I think Wooly actually um, kind of took more of a reserved seat on this one, and I really enjoyed that. So way to go, Wooly. And then we got Casbo featuring, uh, I want to say Vi Vi, or it's probably 6-7, it's probably featuring 6-7, um, but yeah, uh, the I'm in Trouble is the name of this track, and um, the album is uh, almost here, and this is surely the last single before the record drops, and I think two weeks from this one, and I think it's one of the best singles yet, uh, honestly, the vocals are serene, and honestly my favorite vocals on any of these singles yet, um, the production it also shimmers a lot more and shines and a lot brighter than we've heard um, from the already bright progressive house track, so um, yeah, I just think this is a great cut, and I'm excited for the album. And shockingly this high up this week, we've got Afroki, who is Afrojack and Steve Aoki, featuring Jordan Grace with Save My Soul, a new double-sided single come out from Afroki, who is this now new duo of uh, producers that have not been known to do some great stuff, but... Honestly, I had really low expectations for this, and uh, it was it was pretty great. I think it's really fun. I think Jordan's vocals are also really nice here, and the beat is this kind of like big room, main stage, electro hybrid of sorts that has hints of early two thousands nostalgia to it. And um, yeah, I'm 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 shocked. I enjoyed this as much as I did. Uh, I genuinely was like, oh wow, this is this doesn't sound like what I know from Afrojack and Steve Aoki right now. This is actually pretty great. So I'm excited to see what's coming down the line uh, more from these two. And then we got another Spin Back remix. Uh, this is the Camouflage remix of A Moment Apart, originally by Odessa. Uh, a surprising amount of the original is actually kept intact here, which is, I think is a brilliant move from Camouflage, as this is quite an iconic album opener. Um, but mix-wise, I think Camouflage does kind of um, strip back things, uh, the intensity from the original. It makes it more of a kind of bouncier style of house that is a little bit more uh, subdued, I would say. Uh, it's a great mix. Doesn't really beat the original, though. And um, yeah, I still really, really enjoy it, as it's this high up on my list this week, so... Uh, then we got Bauer with All My Ladies, uh, quite the stylistic, stylistic shift from uh, the regular Bauer I think we're used to hearing, um, and it works. Uh, it's got this kind of Eurodance synth and melody that can turn any room into an instant dance party. It's just the right amount of nostalgia as well that kind of keeps me happy and not feeling like it's overdone. And so I uh, really like this huge stylistic shift from his last album, and um, I like it a lot. 
Then we've got the AU5 remix of Sanctum Eternal by Essinger. Uh, I do appreciate how true AU5 stayed uh, to the core sound of Essinger um, in this remix. And by that, I mean this track isn't super linear. Uh, Essinger really loves having these like longer, heavier like drops in the front end and then the back being more of this kind of drawn out, unique track. You don't really hear a ton of uh, this structurally from a lot of tracks and Essinger keeps this sound very alive here and AU5 doesn't really um, remove it for a more basic like verse, pre-chorus drop, verse, like bridge, like doesn't, it, it keeps it, keeps the funness and the uniqueness of the track structure. And so, um, yeah. And I mean, as always, you've got a five production here, which is immaculate as always his bass growls, the synth runs, even the sustains, uh, add a ton of energy to the track. So that's a great one. Then we've got Tokyo Machine with Hot Shot. All the ingredients are here for a pumped up Tokyo Machine track, uh, but with a heavier emphasis on the bass line, more so than I think we've ever heard, um, making this also kind of a bass house track rather than an electro house track. Um, it's driven, it's got a ton of glitchy elements to it. Um, if you like heavy Tokyo, this is probably the heaviest Tokyo Machine track we've got ever. I think so, it has to be, and it's fantastic. It might be one of my favorites as well. Then we're moving into the standout category. We got two songs in standout that I wanted to talk about this week. I thought they were cut above the rest. And we're starting with Fox Stevenson, Sorry. Um, wow, this is just a future super fun track. It's got kind of this jumpy DNB set, like take to it with a stuttering synth as well here. Um, and kind of like flips the track on a dime for like a truly halftime finale. Um, both drops here are long and have enough of a melodic switch to be super engaging. It's a really unique track, as I always say with Fox Stevenson. I don't know how he continually innovates and makes things so interesting time and time again, but here we are saying the same thing again. Incredible track. But my number one song of the week that I want to talk about was Fool's Damage. Uh, I mean, you can't go wrong with Fool, and I feel like this track is just a step above the rest uh, in terms of his last record. I really loved his last album. I thought it was fantastic, um, but this just feels like another level, personally. Um, there's a lot more going on here and kind of the background noise and subtle sound design that I think Fool um, just was able to accomplish more on this kind of track than I think he did maybe even the last album, and I don't want to discredit his last album at all. I just think this is... If we had all of this as the last album, I think this like would have been my favorite album of all time, maybe. But yeah, I mean, whether it's like the synth runs, the string sections, the ever-changing melody, this track is just like full in top form. And uh, go listen to it right now. But uh, yeah, other than that, uh, I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say on any and all songs in the comment section below. But other than that, I am Dakota from Motai Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.